A huge thank you to all the super sponsors who make it possible for me to make these videos. Visit David X Newton on Patreon to join the ASCII Brigade. Z script was a bit of an enigma to me for a long time. It's the scripting language that GZ Doom uses, and it replaces the long established format for creating new content called Decorate. Famously, it's fairly difficult to get into if you don't know where to begin, because even though Zscript has been around for several years now, most of GZ Doom's documentation is still geared towards the old Decorate way of doing things. So here's my attempt at a guide to get people started in creating things for GZ Doom with Zscript. There's one big question that I think many Zscript guides don't address why do you need to switch to Zscript? And if you can do everything that you want to in GZ Doom already with Decorate and the accompanying scripting language ACS, maybe you'll find you don't need to. For things like scenery and new monsters that behave like the default Doom ones, the old Decorate style still works. But once you get a bit more ambitious, you'll start running into its limitations. Perhaps you need to keep track of some variables on a monster to give it a more complex behaviour than normal. You might find yourself having to assign a specific ID to the player at the start of the level so you can refer to them from an ACS script, or write and compile an ACS library because a pickup needs to make a call to get something that isn't available to it in Decorate. It's possible to work around all these. For the first ramp in 2021 I wrote an entire garden building minigame using Decorate and ACS, but it was clunky and required a lot of thinking around obstacles, keeping track of thing IDs and generally tricking the computer into doing it. Zscript lets you get much deeper into the details of GZ Doom than the old scripting languages do. You can react to a much greater variety of things happening in the game, manipulate game elements like line defs and sectors without having to specifically make them addressable with tags, and you can create classes that don't just exist in the game world but can interact with data behind the scenes as well. This lets you manipulate all sorts of things on top of the base GZ Doom engine, allowing you to create very involved gameplay modifications or turning the game into something completely different. Like Decorate, Zscript is written as one or more text format lumps and is used to define objects and their behaviour. If you're coming from using Decorate, the old way of defining actors and states is still there, although its syntax has changed a little, but Zscript objects can also take advantage of a wider language that shares much of its concept and syntax with other object-oriented programming languages such as Java and C Sharp. Going over these is a large job, and I'll try to explain the OOP concepts that you'll need to know about as they come up, but before really diving into Zscript it might help to follow a beginner tutorial for either of those. In particular, having a grasp of concepts like inheritance and overridden or virtual functions will help understand what's happening throughout a lot of Zscript, and I hope that I can give a good enough introduction to them here for them to be understandable. Throughout this tutorial I won't just talk about how to build a project, but where the functionality that I'm using is documented and how to discover more of it for yourself. Zscript does suffer a bit from a lack of documentation because there's just so much of Zscript to document and so much you can do with it, but various tutorials and references for what all the components do have been written, and this one by Alison G. Watson and Fira Watson is currently my preferred reference. However, I think a lot of Zscript's possibilities can be understood by looking at just two concepts. The first idea is thinkers. A thinker is an object that can perform actions. In the Decorate world you're always working with actors, which are kinds of thinkers that are present as physical entities in the game. Imps or teleport destinations or heads on sticks. But thinkers exist one place above them in the object hierarchy, as objects that don't necessarily have a presence. A thinker can be a monster or other in-game item, but it can also be something that controls a game mechanic in the background, or even just a data store that other objects can refer to. To define a thinker's behaviour you can write a tick method for it. GZ Doom will call this on every game tick. In Decorate and in the most basic Zscript cases, monsters and other actors just advance through their list of states and call functions that are defined there, but Zscript thinkers can handle themselves however they like. It's possible for a Zscript monster to use its tick methods to look at other game variables and jump around its list of states to react intelligently to the player's actions. And a thinker representing some sort of timer might not even need a list of states, and would just use its tick method to count down. Having thinkers in the game greatly expands the number of things you can read and react to. The second idea is event handlers. Event handlers allow you to react to things happening in the game world without the clumsiness of having to assign tags to objects and make calls through ACS. 
When you add an event handler to the game, it will be notified whenever something happens that it's set up to listen for. You could think of these in a similar way to the special ACS script. You could have code in an event handler for a map being loaded or a player entering or exiting it. However, the big difference here is that event handlers can also react to much more detailed things a monster being damaged, a line being activated, and even the player making key presses. The Events and Handlers page on the ZDoom wiki has a list of events that can be detected by these handlers. The possibilities are very extensive. A lot of ZScript's power comes from a behaviour common to both of these objects. They provide functions that you can override in your custom subclasses to insert your own logic. Anything that extends the Thinker class will have its tick method called 35 times per second, and an event handler will run functions for whatever events it's set up to listen for. Using these together, plus the access that ZScript gives you to the internals of the game world, is possible to make some very interesting stuff. In this tutorial, we're going to use ZScript to do something Doom never asked for, adding a little economy of sorts so the player can buy health and power-ups. We're also going to reward the player for their speed in killing Hellspawn, and learn how to use ZScript to add a widget to the HUD to display the state of everything. To do all this, we'll be using both thinkers and event handlers to alter the level, handle input and react to events, draw to the screen and even read from elsewhere in the WAD. You can download the resources for this project from this link. It contains a couple of sprites and extras that we'll refer to in our Z script, but you're welcome to make up your own version of any of these assets. To begin with, take this resources zip and unzip it into a new folder. This will be our PK3 folder. The contents of this can be zipped into a PK3 to create a packaged mod for GZ Doom. To test it without packaging, you can drag the folder to GZ Doom XE without zipping, or open it using the command line. From the next video onwards, I'll guide you through adding some Z script elements to use these assets in our small gameplay altering project. So click to the next video, and let's begin.